the mic on. Good morning and welcome to the uh, hearing of the Rules Election and Intergovernmental Relations Committee. Today is Friday, February 21st. I'm joined by my colleague Marquise Harris Dawson. We're going to go ahead and take public comment first. If I call your name, please come up. Armando Herman, followed by Jack. Is there someone here by the name of Jack? Jack, are, the, are you in the audience? Patricia McAllister, Rob Kwan. Mr. Herman, you're speaking on items 1 through 12 and general yes, public mommy. comment. Yes. For the record, CF number 20000459B298581. Experiencing homelessness. Tax credits, supportive housing. My opinion, it's all fucked up. We should thank Ben Carson and Donald Trump for bringing a reality to the asylum of City Hall, the homeless crisis capital of the world. And no one better to thank than Gavin Newsom, the fool who's going to raise our taxes and expedite more taxes to fuck us up. Who should we blame? We blame the city attorney's office for not taking care of the business for the people. Litigation of eight to $1,200 an hour to pay for outside counsel to do shit. All bullshit, like Nancy Pelosi, the cunt from San Francisco bullshit. And then we go into the resolution on item eight before some jackass rudely interrupts me regarding District 911. I'm familiar with 911. Matter of fact, I made a 911 call I believe January 22nd, 2020, and the dumb motherfuckers for nine minutes and so many seconds did not come to my home as I reported a 911 call. Fuck the police, fuck the DA, fuck the city attorney, NWA, community impact statement, none submitted. Then we go into the ethics commissions regarding interest code, regarding the incorporation certification of Los Angeles Municipal Code, once again, for the record, B298581, slap retaliation by the city attorney's office in L.A. Great. Next speaker is Jack. Is anyone here with that name, Jack? Person's not in the audience. Patricia McAllister, you want to come on up? And you're speaking on items 4, 5, 7, 10 through 12, and general public comment. Okay, let's start here with uh, item here where you want uh, number two, you want illegal aliens uh, to be able to come into the country if they declare domestic violence. So they can get beat up by their boyfriend and they come and get in, come into California. Okay, let me say this. We know we had an invasion of illegal aliens in 2019. Because of the Democrats and what you guys have done as far as laws, they had to let 375,000. Can we just know? I'm sorry, Ms. McAllister. Can we stop for a time? Can we just make a. a stop the clock. He's, stop he's letting the, the clock. clock run. Yeah, we got it. We, we're going to stop the clock. I just want to make sure we make note of Mr. Herman's interruption at this meeting as he was exiting our council chambers. Sorry about that, Ms. McAllister. Go ahead. According to uh, Border Patrol and the government, because of the Democrats, we had to allow 375,000 illegal aliens into California last year. They just reported this because of the laws that the Democrats put on, put on the record. Now, where are those 375,000 people? They're living in our affordable housing. You don't see them on the street. That's why the, it, we had an increase in the homeless in 2019 because those illegal aliens got in here. Many of them here because they said their boyfriend beat them up. They want to come here and get free health insurance and free benefits and things of that nature. This election, we should not vote for any Democrats whatsoever. Now, here's another thing. You want uh, money for the homeless. We don't need any more money to come into Los Angeles, okay? You, you, you have not used or you misused the $1.2 billion in, in HHH money. No, nothing has been built, and that bill was passed in three years ago, that a measure. So we shouldn't spend one dime because that's more money to be embezzled as far as I'm concerned. Anytime you would allow a developer to charge $300,000 to build a studio apartment, 
okay? A studio, $375,000, that money is gone. That money is gone, that HHH money. We won't be able to build, build very much with that. Now, I have proof. The city is always talking about, oh, these homeless people on the street, there's no place for them, let's build more shelters. Well, I have proof. HUD, HUD has a continuum of care, careless assistance program. There are thousands upon thousands of vacancies for permanent housing, permanent supportive housing, transitional housing. These are units that are empty. I've got the list, and there are more of them. There are more programs, so what's going on? They're holding back, and this is to the people, they're holding back these units. They're not putting African Americans in them, they're holding them. And then when these illegal aliens flood and come in, they give them to the illegals. But they're not, there's so many of these units that are vacant, they're not even, they don't have enough to, I mean, illegals are in most of them, so the illegals have their place. They're holding these units, and I have proof, and I've uh, revealed this to the media. We need an investigation. You would never believe that we have enough affordable housing. These crooked Democrats are doing all of this just to get that money so that they can embezzle those funds, and I have proof. You will reap what you sow. Next speaker is Rob Kwan, followed by Sean McMorris. Rob, you're speaking at items 1, 10, 11, and general public comment. Uh, good morning. Uh, for item one, it's regarding census outreach, and uh, I, I think this is great. Um, although I don't think we should lose focus, um, it seems as though the priority right now is making sure we get the maximum funding from the feds possible, and not necessarily uh, representation. Um, I, I think it's important to remember what the census results in, and that's redistricting. And our last experience with re redistricting in the city was uh, fraught with division, not just outside of City Hall, but within this council. Um, the best way we can avoid that and ensure we have a more representative government is to form an independent redistricting commission. For items 10 and 11, uh, this is regarding the conflict of interest code with the Ethics Commission. Uh, I, I would just highlight it's important to make sure we have the uh, proper budget to enforce and educate the public and members on these items. Um, just think to yourself, wouldn't you appreciate more guidance from the Ethics Commission on behested payments, uh, what your obligations are and your staff's obligations, uh, everybody across this government? Uh, I think it's also important to remember that we have a badly outdated lobbying ordinance in the city of LA. Compared to other jurisdictions, um, there are certain individuals who spend a lot of time advocating in front of these halls and uh, because they, they get compensated heavily, um, but they might limit their hours below 30 and a quarter. Uh, they're just that highly effective. Uh, and they would say as much. Um, there are people that aren't captured by our lobbying ordinance. Uh, it's important for this council to step up. You were submitted a uh, comprehensive reform two years ago almost, and that council file is set to expire. Um, a whole lot of work was put into that, and I think it would really behoove this council to step up um, and, and actually take that task up. Uh, either send that back to the Ethics Commission with recommendations or fix it yourselves. Um, I'd like to conclude my public comment about voting. Uh, vote Center's open tomorrow in Los Angeles. It's a really great opportunity to increase turnout, and I think, unfortunately, um, the county registrar has a focus on avoiding an Iowa situation, avoiding technological failure. Um, and not necessarily on increasing turnout. We've handed the administration of our elections over to the county, and uh, unfortunately, it looks as though the city hasn't um, implemented a lot of the basic things that were included in the Municipal Reform Commission. Um, having street banner campaigns, utilizing benches, public land to advertise vote centers. Um, I, I, I would ask you, have you seen any vote center material in this city hall? Um, I checked out the city clerk's office, done, there's nothing. I want to finish your thought? Um, yeah, I, I would just conclude. Um, do I have another minute for my general public comment? Or? No, that was the entire thing. Okay, the only thing I would say is, you know, it's a little bit late in the game, but I would highly encourage you to bring Dean Logan back in here and bring the city clerk up with them and talk about how we can collaborate 
and make sure that we supplement their efforts and ensure that we really do get out the vote and have these materials available uh, for our neighborhood councils. Thanks, Rob. Uh, next speaker, Sean. You're speaking on item one and general public comment? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, or good morning. Uh, yeah, um, I'm here just to uh, briefly, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy about the stuff with the census that you're, you're, you're doing. Um, regarding the census, though, I, I, I would like to just briefly talk about redistricting a bit because you, um, after the census, the city will be redistricting. Um, and uh, Common Cause California would ask that the council uh, consider how the process can be made more transparent and inclusive even without a charter amendment. We also recommend creating rules around who can serve as, uh, as staff uh, to avoid the appearance that staff are simply doing the bidding of council members. We further recommend that com the uh, communication with the state auditor to obtain names of the finalists in the application pool for the state's citizens redistricting commission so that you can expand and diversify the pool of commissioners and we look forward to continuing this conversation with the council on this important matter. For my general public comment, um, I would just like to note that, uh, reiterate some of the things that Rob said that um, um, I would encourage you to please adequately fund the ethics department this year. Uh, they currently have an unfunded mandate for a developer database, uh, which is very important. Um, also, there's been some calls uh, that they engage in improve, you know, further education and public outreach, which also requires funding and perhaps some more manpower. So um, the, city con the, the city has some good uh, campaign finance laws, but um, they are only as good as, um, you know, the the funding that goes into the division that enforces and educates about them. So thank you. Thank you, sir. That concludes um, comment on all items, including general public comments. So we're going to go ahead and close that. Um, let's go ahead and items three, I'm sorry, one, three, four, and six through 12 would be approved on consensus unless you have any questions, Mr. Harris Johnson. With an with an amendment on items one to instruct the CAO's office to make necessary technical corrections to the fund transfer instructions. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Excuse me, Madam Chair. For the record, the CLA has submitted reports for all of these items, and we have made uh, copies available for the public. Great. Um, did you note my instructions on item number one? Uh, Do you need me to repeat that? Yes, please. So I'm moving that we approve items one, three, four, six through twelve on consent with an amendment to item number one to instruct the CAO to make necessary technical corrections to the trans to the funds tra transfer instructions. Yes, thank you. Okay. Are there no objections? Okay, so approved. Um, let's move on to items number two and five for discussion. If I can please have our staff come on up. Item number two is a resolution that I co-presented with Council Member Buscaino that requests state funding for a pilot to provide counseling and coordinated services to help LAUSD students and families experiencing homelessness. And if I remember correctly, during the last homeless count, there was approximately 1,800 homeless families in the city of Los Angeles. Of those, 150 live in my district. And so most of these families, if not all, they all have their children attending LAUSD schools. So this is why I think we need to work together with the district to try to address this issue. As you well know, I've, um, over the past uh, few years, we've been trying to help stabilize homeless families in my district, districts, particularly those who um, families who are currently living in motels, which I've reiterated over and over again, is not conducive to raising children. And so last year, we were able to secure $650,000 of a HEAP fund to provide a very targeted assistance to families living in motels along the Sepulveda corridor in my district. And so this resolution is requesting for additional state funding for this, pro for this pilot program to help LAUSD families and students experiencing homelessness. So that's the whole purpose of this. And so I just wanted you to um, perhaps um, just give us a, an, an overview, something I haven't touched on, and I have a few questions for staff as well. Sure. I don't know if our colleagues from the CLA want to Good morning, uh, Andy Gallant from the Office of the Chief Legislative Analyst. Uh, so the report before you is in regards to uh, support for a letter 
sent from the superintendent of LAUSD to Gav, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom, as well as Mark Ridley Thomas, um, who, are, who is on the commission for, uh, for the supportive housing and homelessness. You're referring to the homeless task force? I'm sorry? The homeless task force that yes, Mr. Correct. Mark Ridley Thomas co-chairs? Correct. So this, this letter essentially uh, outlines the current efforts LAUSD is uh, taking to provide services for homeless students and, their, and families and provide uh, request additional funding uh, for those efforts. Uh, the city currently co uh, coordinates with LAUSD to provide uh, programs for uh, homeless, homeless youth and their families. Uh, one of these efforts was to provide uh, Section 8 vouchers to, to students and their families who are currently homeless. Uh, HCID also provides several uh, services for homeless youth through their family source centers, and I believe they can give more details regarding that. Abigail, if you can just talk a little bit about what the pilot would include, sure. um, particularly, and then um, also ensuring that there's a real commitment for resources to actually get families out of motels. Yes, thank you, Council President Martinez, and thank you for leading on this very important issue. We share your sense of urgency to respond um, adequately and efficiently to the growing number of homeless families that we are seeing. Um, we can speak to the work that we're doing through the Family Source System, which has traditionally been a system that serves families who are low income, many of them on the brink of homelessness. And we actually use the McKinney-Vento definition of homelessness, which is the definition that LUSD uses, uh, not as restrictive as the HUD definition. So we are serving families who are doubled up, who are living potentially in illegal dwelling units, mm -hmm. families who are temporarily housed or in shelter motels. We're seeing an inflow of homeless families. Um, in the last 18 to 24 months, we had a 600 homeless families in the family source system, which again has not been the traditional population that we've served. Um, but because of that, we have been working very closely with LASA to update our, um, our processes. So we looked at how we could easily identify homeless families in our initial intake form. We've trained all of our family source agencies on trauma-informed uh, approaches. We are working with um, LASA to implement um, diversion specialists. The um, problem-solving specialists will be co-located at family source centers. We're also going to be expanding a solid ground partnership um, that was initially funded in your district through the support of Supervisor Sheila Kuehl with LA Family Housing and new economics for women that will be expanded to eight additional family source centers in the coming weeks. Uh, and that will provide financial support to families and also a housing stability advisor to provide ongoing case management because we found that that's another gap, that it's not just important to provide them with the financial support, but to provide them with ongoing support and case management services. So we're going to be I implementing that. And also we've been working very closely with LUSD in the last couple of weeks much more aggressively. Super, um, board members Goldberg and Gomez have um, convened a couple of meetings already that include the county, the city, LASA, to talk about additional strategies and partnerships that we can implement in the coming weeks. So we are looking at two additional uh, strategies or partnerships. One is to have um, the school district has already identified the schools throughout the district that have the highest concentrations of homeless students and they have other vulnerabilities, students who are highly at risk um, because of other risk factors, you know, high, high <coughs> Uh, propensity of students on free and reduced lunch, high poverty rates in those schools. So what we're going to do is we're going to triage through LASA and HCID through the family source system and the family coordinated entry system. We're going to have an actual physical footprint at those school sites. So instead of having counselors, we're going to do the reverse. We currently already have counselors that are co-located at our family source centers and at some of the coordinated entry sites. We're also going to have staff co-located at schools, which is, is, is new um, and this is uh, an opportunity that we want to take full advantage of. Uh, board member both Gomez and um, Goldberg have already committed to identifying by name um, the students so we can proactively engage those students who, again, families who are um, experiencing challenges. The other um, partnership that we're looking at is adding additional mental health 
professionals. Um, LAUSD is looking at that. We, we feel that that's important to address the trauma. Um, LAUSD recently surveyed students and found that 48% of their students mm -hmm. have either moderate or high risks or high levels of trauma. And trauma is not being adequately supported. We're not responding to it. So we want to support the district in their efforts to seek additional funding to be able to add additional mental health professionals, both at schools and our community centers. So they're committed to doing that as well. And I'll let my colleagues add um, any other uh, initiatives that they're working on. I'm joined by colleagues from HSID and LASA. Uh, Jeff Proctor, Associate Director of Performance Management for LASA. Appreciate the Council for having us here to um, help answer questions today. Um, so LASA has been engaged with uh, our subrecipient uh, service providers, uh, other funders, community partners on um, CES refinement workshops for the family system for about the past six months. Um, what we're uh, attempting to do sort of uh, reorient the system to a certain extent to try to do diversion and prevention first. Um, what we found with our, you know, our data is that it's, it's, you know, it can be much uh, cheaper and more effective to stabilize families in their housing and their own communities rather than uh, bring them into a homeless services system where it can be long and complicated and expensive to get them out of that system. So ramping up our diversion efforts, having diversion um, and problem solving conversations throughout <coughs> the system, different touch points before families might enter the system is something that we've been um, rolling out and ramping up um, very broadly. Um, we, we agree that motels are not an appropriate environment for families to be living long term. It's been used as sort of a sheltering intervention of last resort because we haven't had enough congregate of site facility based shelters for families experiencing homelessness. So the different em efforts of the CS refinement are essentially uh, developing more uh, opportunities for prevention where we can stabilize families in their own housing. And then for those families who do need temporary sheltering environments, uh, the preference is a site-based facility based where there's supervision, there's security, there's access to services. We don't fa want families to isolate mm -hmm. in, in motels where the, the access to services and supervision um, is limited. So we've added hundreds of shelter beds for families across the system uh, this year alone. We expect a few hundred more to be online by the beginning of the next fiscal year. Uh, so if the family comes into the system and needs a, you know, a temporary housing, short-term housing, the preference or priority would be to get them into a shelter uh, rather than a motel. For those that families that do go into motels, the pilot like we've um, developed with um, Council District 6 and 7 to have wraparound services available to those families and their children has been you know, a great pilot that you know, we're hopeful we can expand. Uh, having wraparound services, the school district involved to keep the youth uh, enrolled in school, services for families to address um, nutrition needs, uh, employment needs, uh, mental health needs, all of those kinds of things have been uh, lacking to a certain extent for those families who we have had to shelter in motels. Um, so those kinds of services plus additional housing supports, you know, housing navigation, rapid rehousing to get those families out of motels and back into community housing are all parts of a CES refinement. Um, and we should expect, you know, additional resources this year to pay for some of those housing supports. I'm not sure if Nancy has any other. Sure, I think you pretty much covered the, the, the how we're approaching uh, crisis housing and, and prevention. I just wanted to add that in terms of uh, families, uh, we've been successful in working with LASD um, to connect families in a high need um, elementary school in the San Fernando Valley to about 50 <laughs> uh, permanent housing vouchers. Um, and then we have other opportunities um, that we've expanded with the city uh, housing authority to connect about 80 families to housing vouchers over the last year. Um, and this is an expanded opportunity in partnership with DCFS and the housing authorities. And um, we've recently applied for more of those vouchers. So just wanted to highlight the extent of collaboration that we're doing across different partners to really um, get families connected to permanent housing. And I'd like to add one thing, Veronica, with HSID. <coughs> Um, we also have an angel fund that can help families that are in um, motels. And so what this angel fund does is for working families, it will provide financial assistance. Um, we have uh, $250,000 available, and we've already used 87000 to assist families. And that, goes, that can help them with um, move-in costs, security for an uh, uh, apartment unit, um, and then other means too, whatever their financial crisis they, that they might be experiencing that, that led to that situation. 
Um, so maybe they need a, their car repair. They can assist with those efforts too. Can I ask you something? You called it the Angel Fund? Yes. I love that name. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a private funder that I was going to just ask yeah. you. Um, yeah. I thought I had heard it was a private, f anonymous private funder. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. And so is this a one-time one time money or can we go back to this anonymous angel? We, we and definitely want to keep him engaged. Um, he's been very committed and we have other ideas for him as well. <laughs> very well. Uh, Mr. Harris Dawson, do you have any questions on this item? See none. Uh, thank you very much for coming out early this morning and um, I will move to approve um, without objection this resolution so we can move forward and try to lobby some more money from our state partners. Thank you very much guys. Uh, let's move on to item number five. I think Abby, you might, are you staying for this one? Or no, John's coming up. Do you want to introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about this item? Um, I just have a few questions. Uh, good morning, John Wickham with the Chief Legislative Analyst and Pernita Matia with Chief Legislative Analyst. Um, Pernita will give you a brief summary and then I'll add some additional comments. Good morning. Uh, the report before you uh, from the Office of the CLA um, is regarding a resolution um, introduced on January 22nd, 2020. Uh, the resolution states that the governor's proposed budget for fiscal year 2021 has $1.4 billion in funding for homelessness, which includes $750 million to reduce homelessness by providing funding to develop housing, rental subsidies, and subsidies to board and care facilities. Council members Mitchell O'Farrell and um, all introduced the resolution to support the state's proposed budget and additionally sponsor legislation to include an ongoing funding source of $2 billion from the state to cities commensurate with need to sustain and expand homeless programs. Um, the report details various city efforts on homelessness that um, we have implemented over the years and it also um, discusses the need for additional funding from state and a joint statewide effort to address homelessness. The report then also lists cities' priorities and strategies um, according to the four-pronged approach of prevention, housing, rehousing, and street management. So in Sacramento, things are moving, I, I would say, rather quickly. The governor released his draft budget in January um, as required by state law, and he had a proposal to provide the $750 million. I think there is some uh, question as to whether some of the priorities that he identified might be most appropriate. For example, it appears that that funding allocation includes funding for board and care facilities, and it would um, be appropriate in, uh, that there be a separate funding for board and care facilities, and that $750 million be provided for homeless services in, in, um, in the categories that um, Pranita had identified. So we're watching to see if there's some movement in that direction. In addition, the um, legislative analyst's office released a report to the legislature recommending that rather than uh, do something new in terms of the way funding would be allocated that the state focus um, immediately on continuing programs like HEAP or HAP while they develop a statewide strategy for funding allocation and then moving into a new strategy for allocating that funding. So we're waiting to see if the legislature um, considers the LAO's um, uh, um, analysis on that question. The other piece that's coming is we understand a legisla uh, legislator may be introducing a bill today with regard to the $2 billion in funding. So we're waiting and watching to see if that legislation comes forward. If so, uh, we, would bring for we could bring forward to you a revised resolution on this matter to um, address the specific bill that's introduced. All of this is happening within the, the budget process and so, um, the budget, the state budget is adopted in June. We expect to see a revised budget from the governor in mid-May, about May 15th, and then the legislature will move very quickly in adopting a budget. We would expect the question of 750 million, 2 billion to be addressed in that venue as opposed to um, the longer legislative process that ends in August and September. 
And so our uh, recommendation is that you would instruct us to monitor that closely and report back to you um, immediately as these issues develop. I have a few questions. So of the $750 million in the governor's um, proposed budget, how are we working with the governor's office to make sure that the service providers in the city of Los Angeles uh, will be receiving its fair share of funding? That is the big question. Mm -hmm. um, the governor has pr uh, proposed a new process for allocating money out to um, different agencies in the state. And that is precisely the issue that the LAO had identified. Creating a new process to allocate this funding is, you know, is problematic. It, it, it may take time to get that going, get that set up. There may be an administrative costs associated with that that are outside of, you know, in addition to. So there needs to be some work done to make sure that local agencies are actually able to access that funding. But we're working with the governor's office on those issues? Um, we, we absolutely can. Um, we should. In, yeah. Um, because I also want to know how the new system of providing funding directly to nonprofits is going to impact the city. Um, right. And the time issue, the timeline of how they issue the money, how it gets sent to the to the nonprofits, and they begin the work is important. Yes. Um, so I suggest that we engage in the with the governor's office to ensure that we are providing um, adequate feedback, so that we're not negatively impacted. So um, the other question I had, so the. Um, Regarding the bill that you said might be introduced today, so do we have a bill language that we that we you've looked at or or, or, a, or a sponsor of the bill? We have not heard. Uh, I I have not seen any bill language yet, and I I I have heard a name for the potential uh -huh. sponsor, but I don't know if it's appropriate to because I haven't seen the actual language introduced yet. Today is the deadline for introducing new legislation, so we should see it Very today well. or on Monday. All right, thank you, Mr. Harris Dawson. Did you have a question? I just had a question going back to um, uh, Chairwoman's questions about the state funding um, to nonprofit organizations directly. Um, can you all get some information on how those grants will be administra uh, administrated? So historically, mm -hmm. uh, the state is even worse than the city in terms of paying their bills. Mm -hmm. Uh, as someone who ran an organization who had city and state grants, I think the city took about six months to pay and the state took about nine months to pay. Uh, and if that's the way they're going to go, it seems like we ought to get in front of that before they even start. Because the next thing you know, our organizations will be coming to us saying we need bridge financing to administer the state funding. Right. Great the, gov point. the governor's comments in his state of the state um, the other day, speech the other day, um, is addressing some of those points, but I think the proof is actually in the language that we see in front of us. And so the, your point is very well taken, that it needs to be efficient and effective. The money needs to get on the streets and whether that is a state process. And, and this is, I think, the concern, a new department coming in, working in an area that doesn't have experience in it, or new regional entities who haven't been identified yet. It would be most effective if we stuck with um, entities that we already know, such as LASA or the county or the city, who already have established protocols in getting money out, and, and we would um, be best of, you know, helped if we pursued a process that allowed us to continue with those structures. Yeah. Mr. Wickham, I'm going to suggest that um, I don't want to take too much time talking about this today because it's not agendized, but I do want to bring our, our um, lobbyist that represents the city um, to the next committee um, meeting to discuss the legislative package, um, feedback from this committee, um, particularly when it comes to the $750 million of the governor, governor's proposed budgets to deal with homelessness, um, to start talking about these questions and make sure that these things get addressed now as we're moving along, but I think we get we have we need a better sense as to what exactly uh, we're going to get behind in Sacramento. Um, yes. I know there was a lot of discussions on the state of the state address, which I've heard there's there, it's very ambitious. He spent most of his speech talking about homelessness, so I think we need to hear from our lobbyists in Sacramento, bring him here, have him give us the the lay, lay of the land and understand what's happening, and get in front of it before mm -hmm. we we become you know, 
get too far we're without too far having removed, the conversation. And we're, we're, we're too far removed, and then we're you know waving our yeah. flag, hello, LA's been left out again. So yeah. can you do that? Um, we will work with the mayor's office. The, the city's lobbyist is um, a contractor for the, for the mayor, but we will um, work with the mayor's office to uh, set that up and work with your office as well to make sure that that happens at the next meeting. All right, thank you. Do you have any other questions on this item, sir? Okay, so I'd like to just propose a slight amendment um, to, to item number five. I, item number five, I'd like to add homeless prevention programs to the list of things that we can fund if we were to receive the ongoing money. So let's um, please amend the resolution to include that uh, in the last sentence. And in addition, I'd like to instruct the CLA to monitor the state budget and legislation on this matter to report on developments related to funding allocations allocated to local services um, and all of other related matters on this issue. Okay? okay. Would, and would you like that s to specifically include your point on ensuring the local, um, the local funding? Yes, how issue. it's going to yeah. impact this new, th this new system that, that he's going to create, how is it going to impact the yeah. city, uh, along with the, um, the comment that Mr. Harris Dawson made in terms of how we reimburse folks, yeah. okay. how that's all going to work. Okay. Great. We will, and making we will sure make that, that our nonprofits in Los Angeles get it get their fair share of funding. Excellent. Okay. We will revise that for you for the council committee. All right. Very well. Are there any questions, concerned? If not, without objection, this uh, resolution is approved as amended. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. There are no more items on our agenda this morning, so our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.